All right, we are here with Christian, the Warrior Lead, one championship lightweight king. Christian, man, it's good to see you again. How have you been doing? Uh, I've been doing great. Uh, you know, life's life's been great so far with with my new baby here in the world, and uh, just enjoying the time. Yes, how is dad life? I was going to ask you. Um, your first child, and uh, born just days apart from your sister Angela's first child. Uh, it's it's been amazing. Um, you know since the the birth of my daughter it's it's really been the best thing that's ever happened to me and um i'm really i'm really glad that uh, my last fight went the way that it did and i'm able to you know take this time off to spend with her when she's she's so young and growing so quickly yeah and you're pretty young yourself man you know still 22 like what's what's that like being a young father was it something you pictured yourself being at this age or did you think it might come later uh well you know my wife and I, we, we met at a very young age and, you know, we got married young also. So, uh, you know, in a way, our life uh, started moving a lot faster than, uh, you know, say an, another average person that, that meets the other half later, later on down the road. So um, we kind of already knew that we wanted to have a family. And so, you know, once we were married, uh, there was really nothing else to wait for. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I'm happy that uh, we didn't wait and that she's here now. Is it helpful having Angela's baby around as well? Because your your wife and and she can go through like the same thing, same journey together, and you and Bruno can help each other. Is that is that been fun? Yeah, it, it actually has been fun. Um, you know, we will frequently go over to each other's house houses and um, you know let the let the two babies spend some time together. We also can can talk because we're on similar real similar journeys you know both of our babies um they're just a little bit over two weeks apart and um you know so we we're on the exact same journey in terms of how our babies are growing and developing and uh we're always able to just talk to each other about it and it's great to to have um someone so close to us um on that same path how long do you think you'll be doing this i mean when do you think you might get back in there is it you even thinking about a return this year or what what kind of time frame are you putting on that um so i'm actually i'm still training um you know not like a like a fight camp training but i'm still staying busy in the gym um i'm still you know i'm always staying ready year round but um i think i'll be getting back in there you know towards the end of the year um definitely plan on getting one more uh in 2021 but um you know, right now we're just kind of trying to line up the opponent, line up the location, and um, once we get that set, then then I'll have a date. Yeah, you were very respectfully called out by Okre Yoon after he beat Eddie Alvarez. And does that one make sense for you? Because you cleared everyone else out in the division. You've beaten the rest of the top five. Now he's the only one left. So does that make sense, Okre Yoon against Christian Lee? Well, you know... Um, yeah, I, I like Okra Yoon. Um, he had a great last two performances uh, against Murat and against Eddie. A uh, really respectful guy. And uh, he's got really good skills as well. So, um, you know, I like his call out. He's probably the most respectful call out I've, I've seen. <laughs> um, but, you know, my, my opinion on that is, you know, in a stacked division, you know, may, maybe the way it was before when the Grand Prix was going on, uh, I wouldn't say that he is really the guy to get the title shot. But in the situation that he's in right now, uh, I've basically beaten everyone in the top five except for him. And so he's really the last guy left. And so if I was going to make a, a lightweight title defense, it would definitely be against uh, Oak Ray and I, I don't really see anyone else. Um, but, you know, um, I'm always just staying ready. I'm always just seeing who won championship wants to put in front of me and I've never turned down a fight. So um, I think it's most likely going to be him when I defend my belt. Um, I've also got my eyes on the welterweight belt, um, you know, in the near future. So uh, we'll see which fight lines up, but uh, definitely he's deserving. So you want to challenge Cameron Abbasov then for the welterweight title? Yeah, that's definitely something, uh, one of my um, goals for, you know, either this year or next year. But, um, you know, if he's still the champion by then, absolutely, he's the guy I want to face. I mean, because he was looking to go up and uh, challenge Rene de Ritter, I think, for the middleweight belt. So maybe that one might have to wait or 
have you, have you heard anything from one? Would they have any preference for you fighting him or Rainier? Um, You know, I haven't heard anything on that. Um, I think, you know, after uh, Rainier's last performance, I think he's looking to go up to heavyweight. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what, what one championship wants to do, but um, all, all the champions right now are, are bouncing up and down, staying busy. Uh, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the plan is, but um, just going to leave it out there and see, see what the fans have to say about that. Yeah, what did you make of um, Okrayun's performance as well? Were you surprised that he beat Eddie Alvarez? And yeah, what, were you impressed by him? Uh, well, you know, I first uh, took notice of Oak when um, when he beat Marat. You know, that was his first fight uh, in the promotion. Uh, he fought on the same the same event as me. I think his fight played later on um, because it was pre-recorded. Um, but, you know, I watched his fight and uh, he, he did really well stuffing Marat's uh, takedown attempts and, you know, landing clean punches. And, you know, from that performance, um, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I had a, I put notice on him, you know, I started to watch him. So then when he got that fight against Eddie, you know, I really didn't think that it was going to be um, a walk in the park for Eddie. You know, I, I feel that a lot of, a lot of the fans thought it was just going to be a, a, you know, a free fight, an easy road to the top. But, um, you know, Oak was a tough guy and uh, he did a great job dropping him in the first round. And then from there, the fight was actually pretty close. Eddie basically just held him on the, held him against the cage for the, the remaining two rounds. Um, but that first round where he did the damage, where he dropped him and he came close to putting him away, that was what really won him the fight. So, um, you know, clean striking. He's got good takedown defense and overall a good fighter. And... It's every time I I interview, I feel I ask you this question, but where where does that leave Eddie Alvarez? You know, he he's made it clear he wants to fight you and he wants that title. But what path is there now for him? Uh, well, you know, everybody's been asking me about Eddie, yeah. and um, you know, one championship they they pay big bucks to get a former UFC champion, and of course they want him to fight me. You know, that, that's the whole reason he joined the company, right? But right now, he's he's on a losing streak. He had a good win over Edward Foliang. Other than that, he hasn't won in his last four fights in one championship. So um, there's just no way to warrant a title shot. I've never turned down a fight before, but, um, you know, what, what can I say? I want to fight. Eddie wants to fight. The fans want to fight. Um, but he didn't earn it. He didn't earn his way there, so... I don't think it's going to happen uh, anytime soon unless he can, you know, turn his record around and start getting some wins over top contenders. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you gave an interview, I think, to uh, Tops of Sports, I think it was, and then a clip went on Twitter and Eddie responded to it. He seemed pretty angry. I'm trying to find a tweet here, but it, he says, ha ha, you mean, I don't know what the context is again, but he, he sort of pointed out, that he he beat Edward Falayang. He he says he knocked out Lapicus and then he beat Oak Rayun. And then he says, Oh yeah, I did that already. You're well protected, Christian. And if the promotion believed you could beat me, this fight would have happened already. I'd finish you whenever I wanted. Um I, I yeah, I just what what's your response to those remarks? Uh you, you know, it's just it's kind of just funny, you know. I, I just laugh at it. <laughs> um of course, you know, Eddie's going to do whatever he can do to get himself the title shot. And, you know, coming from the UFC, um, a big part of their their marketing is, you know, trash talk. You know, go on social media, you know, stir up some noise and then you'll get a fight. But, you know, that's doesn't seem to be how it's working in one championship. You know, it seems to be the fact that, that you have to earn your way up there to the top. That's how I did it. That's how I've seen all the contenders that became champions do it so uh, I don't see how Eddie's going to be able to get a, make, get himself a title shot off of uh, you know talking some trash on on what is that Twitter yeah, uh, Twitter, Twitter. yeah you know so uh, he didn't he didn't beat Lapicus um, well you know technically he did he really did take him down and it would have been a TKO finish uh, but he, he didn't beat Oak um, and you know his first fight in one championship, he got knocked out in the first round by 
Timofey Nastyukin, the guy that I knocked out in one round. And, you know, uh, I'm not a firm, strong believer in, like, doing MMA math, but it, it's just a fact, yeah. you know. He, he got knocked out in the first round by a guy that I knocked out in the first round. You know, even if we never – never cross paths you can see who's the better fighter in that mix so oh yeah there it is yeah there it is yeah i wanted to just show you um <laughs> i can't i can't remember what you said you, you you said something about uh eddie and um maybe it was his last fight yeah so he was riled up but yeah, yeah i was gonna ask you do you think he, he seems to say oh, I, I beat oak but people maybe the american fans as well especially they don't seem to have cottoned on that one championship has a different uh, rule set, right? And uh, different judging criteria. And especially in one, it you know, the main criteria is sort of damage inflicted is one of is very high up, isn't it? And and it's not judged round by round. So the fact that Oak dropped him and nearly finished him doesn't really matter what Eddie did the rest of the fight. Uh, Oak clearly won that under one's judging criteria, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's not the fight is not scored round by round in one championship, and um, he held him on the cage for two rounds, for rounds two and round three. Then in round one he got dropped clean and uh, you know nearly finished. So that's that's how one championship scores their fights overall based on who was closer to getting the finish. And um, you know he wasn't anywhere close to getting a finish in that fight, so uh, he, he didn't win that fight. And um, you know, a lot of people say that I'm protected by the promotion. <laughs> uh, I've, I've fought 18, 18 times in the promotion already. Uh, I've earned my way up to the top. I've earned my way up to a title shot and lost and had to earn my way back. Um, you know, I haven't been protected. I've started my whole career in one championship. All my fights have been in there, but uh, I've earned my way up to where I am today. So, um, you know, again, he's just it just seems like a guy who's upset and running his mouth. So. I don't have much else to say about that. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think you could say you're protected given you've fought Daggy, you fought Timofey, you fought Yuri, you fought everyone who has kind of thrown down the gauntlet and challenged you. There's no way you've been dodging anyone. You haven't ducked any fights, right? No, no way. Yeah, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, I, I can't really make sense. Of that. I don't know what Eddie is saying, but... Um, yeah, enough about that. I know you you get asked about Eddie every time, so uh, I, I guess maybe we just yeah. I'll ask you how, how was everything with Angela? Do you know when is she still on for November? That was the the plan, but I know that the Grand Prix has now been delayed again. So have they spoke to her about maybe delaying her return? Yeah, so you know I think that um, Angela's return is going to get pushed back because of the fact that the Grand Prix was pushed back. Um, I believe it was supposed to be like sometime in June, right? And it got pushed back um, to July or August. And so I think that's just going to push everything back. And, um, you know, I, I think realistically, Angela's going to be making her returns uh, early in 2022. Uh, right now, she's doing a great job, you know, just slowly doing her rehab, getting her body back into, into shape to be able to train again. And uh, from there, I'm really excited to see how, how she uh, is able to make the transition back from, you know, being a mom to being uh, the world champion that she, she also is. And um, I think that with everything going back and with the fight going from November to uh, early 2022, I think it's just going to be uh, even more time for Angela to get herself ready. And um, I'm really excited for, for her return to the sport. So am I, I can't wait to see it. Um, just hope this, this Grand Prix happens soon. Um, but yeah, I just had one more question I wanted to ask. I, I interviewed Bibiana Fernandez last week and he, he was quite upset. He, he's not, he says he's not been offered a fight for two years. Um, what do you think about Bibiano's situation with one? And are you surprised he's not fought since the, the Tokyo card in October 2019? Uh, you know, thinking back, um, I was there yeah. in, uh, in Tokyo when he fought. That was a long time ago. And, you know, if it's true, if he hasn't been offered a fight in two years, I mean, uh, that's tough because, you know, us as fighters, we, we make a living from fighting. And so I'm sure he's he's itching to defend his belt. Um, and, you know, with all the new signings in one championship, uh, you know, with, with contenders coming to the top like John Lineker, um, 
a uh, f- few other guys, Shuya, you know, I think that he's definitely going to have um, a contender to fight soon. Um, it's been a while, but, you know, with, with COVID, the, the events have just been pushed back so much. So um, I'm sure he was, you know, planned to defend his belt. But, um, you know, maybe maybe everything just got pushed back. And I'm sure he'll be, I'm sure he'll be offered a fight soon. Yeah, and uh, sorry, I did, I did also want to ask you just quickly about Vito Belfort. He, he's gone from one championship. Now, he never actually fought in one. He was signed in March 2019. Yeah, what did you make of his weird, strange time in one? And were you surprised he never fought? Or do you think it just wasn't the right match given his age? And maybe he d- he said he didn't want to really go for the heavyweight title, was more interested in these kind of special fights, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, Vitor Belfort, he did a lot in the sport. Um, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed watching his fights earlier on in his career. Um, he did really well in, in the UFC. And... Um, you know, when he got signed to one championship, it was already um, he was already getting older. You know, so I'm not really surprised that he um, ended up not fighting, because you know I just think about when you know I know that um, B- Vitor Belfort he started his career very young, so to be fighting for that many years, you know, it's really a long time in the sport. So um, I'm not sure what he's moving on to now, but I think that when he joined the promotion, it was it was mainly to help promote the company um, more than actually staying active and fighting and going for the title because, um, you know, he was at a very different stage in his career at the time he got signed. So, you know, if he got signed in his prime or, you know, when he first started, when he was uh, 18, 19 years old, I'm I'm sure he would have done great. Uh, Probably gone gone all the way up to the top and uh, gone a title shot. But um, when he's been in the sport for like over 20 years, um, it's going to be hard to to really get the traction, get the momentum to fight again and then go all the way up there. So um, I'm sure he's, he's on to better things now. Yeah, I mean, do, do you ever think how long you're going to hang around? Because you've been here for a while, but you're still so young, uh, 22, right? So do, do you have a, a date, an age where you think I'm going to be finished or do you not think about that? Uh, well, you know, right now, um, I'm so it's so early in my career. I don't think about stopping. I don't think about retiring. Um, but you know, just looking at the the whole picture of things, and when a fighter starts their career at a younger age, they have to retire earlier. You know, if a fighter starts their career at the age of thirty, you know, they can fight for ten years and, and they'll be forty. You know, and that's a good time to stop. A guy who fights. I made my debut at 17 years old. So 10 years, I'm 27. I don't plan on retiring that soon, but, um, you know, that's already 10 years in the sport. By the time I'm, you know, 37, that would be 20 years in the sport. So, you know, I think I just need to, you know, be honest with myself to know when I'm past my prime and to know when to hang up the gloves because you know the last thing I want to do is to stay in the sport too long because you know we've seen a lot of great championships stay in just a little bit too long and take a lot of bad fights so uh, I just plan on staying long staying in this game as long as I can stay active stay relevant and stay on top yeah I mean because you've already cleared out lightweight and you mentioned welterweight do you think there will be enough challenges for you or you're just going to run out of things to do and maybe at one point you'll just realize there's nothing else for me to do here. <laughs> I think there's always going to be another hungry contender that is screaming their, uh, screaming for a title shot, climbing their way up the rankings. So um, I think I'll be able to stay busy as long as I'm staying on top. Um, but I think that because I started so early, because I claimed the lightweight belt so early, um, my goals are a lot bigger than uh, somebody who's just aiming to reach the title you know i don't want to just have a world title anymore i want to be a world champion across multiple divisions across multiple organizations possibly you know if one championship is open to doing super fights with other organizations i'm all for that i would love to prove that i'm the best fighter in the world so uh definitely have a lot of uh, a lot of goals and aspirations in the sport and uh i'm sure i got more than enough time to do so all right a pleasure as always, Christian. Thanks very much for talking to me. And yeah, I keep enjoying the dead life and I uh, can't wait to see you back, hopefully end of this year. But uh, yeah, thanks again, man. Cheers.
No problem. Sounds good. Thanks. Take care. Easy.